And so now that we've crossed over the Christina Bridge, I think a lot of us are wondering, well, <laughs> what's next? Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about, well, I guess what comes after Christina. Just looking from between now, Christina's release or aka Ruka's release since Christina's banner is long gone and then going all the way to Muimi and if we have time, we might have a look at Muimi. And so originally I wanted to make a video for like year two from like Muimi all the way up to Summer Saren. But then I realized like I just really wanted to be sure that everyone understands what's happening from now, Christina or Ruka banner all the way up until Valentine Shizuru or Muimi banner around there right and so after this video we can start looking at those units and it's it's starting to get really really exciting but otherwise buckle up your seatbelts and get ready for a little bit more of <laughs> really in-depth and boring analysis nah that's not strictly true let's uh Let's have some fun with this, yeah. All right, guys, so the scope of today's video is gonna be from Christina or from Ruka all the way to Valentine Shizuru, and if we can, we'll get to Muimi as well. All right, let's start off with uh, Ruka. And so in the event right now, you guys should have been introduced to old mate Ruka. Ruka is a pretty sweet tank, and honestly, she's kind of like really freaking cracked, especially because of this bad boy over here. I I I'm not gonna even try here. Origin Strike, Severing Moon. So inflicts physical damage to the front most enemy and inflicts a large physical defense debuff to the target. And so let's see how big this physical defense debuff actually is. So reduces the physical defense of targets damaged by the skill by 1.2 plus 1.2 times the skill level. So that's that's actually really freaking good. And so if I was to compare that to Jun, I know that Jun's defense down is just simply a, a small physical defense debuff. And the reason I know that is because it is being applied on skill 2 and the skill 2 effects tend to not be like over overly overpowered. However, this is the Ruka evaluation and so let's have a look at the rest of this because Ruka actually performs well both in CB and Arena. And so again, Ruka, UB, physical defense down and big damage to the front. And then let's move on to skill one, which is a provoke. So this is actually really interesting. So in a nutshell, she gains a buff, which is called provoke. And if she is attacked whilst she is in provoke, she will deal physical damage to enemies in the front line and also knock them back. And so considering that she is a tank, there is a pretty high chance that she is going to get the provoke off. This isn't a case of like Rei or like Akino who have like counter stances, very, very similar mechanics to this. Ruka is a tank and she is actually built to withstand these attacks on her. And again, being up the front means that she is probably going to get hit. So she probably will be getting that provoke off. Not only that, but she's also going to be knocking back a short distance. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I really hate my displacements. Your Tumuki is your Ninons, I believe Summer Pekrin as well, like, oh god. And so you guys can kind of get where I'm getting at with this one. She is going to be a great PvP unit. All right, and so moving forward, we've got the skill two, which is grants recover HP to the user for the first part. And then on top of that, she's gonna get a physical defense buff to the user. Both of these are actually not too bad. They're scaling with physical attack, which is quite normal as well as skill level for the recovery of the HP. And then on top of that, it's a 0.8 multiplier for the physical defense buff, which is, is quite significant, right? So say at level 100, she gets 80 defense. However, as always, what really Really makes it is the attack pattern and that's looking pretty spicy assuming she doesn't get stunned or she doesn't get like wrecked by action speed or like some charms or whatever she's gonna have pretty good survivability especially considering you can see skill 2 over here attack attack skill 1 and then skill 2 again and then from here it's only an attack skill 1 and then back into skill 2 so the healing the defense buff is quite frequent and so yeah with all of this combined especially with the EX skill as well you've got the magic defense up she's actually like quite a well-rounded tank Tank that's pretty freaking annoying. And so if you guys do decide to pick her up for PvP, you are going to be looking at like trying to five star her. I don't know about you guys, but if anyone catches a glimpse of like a three star or even a four star in my BA, like they get freaking chomped. However, on the CB side, you're probably going to be looking at three stars for her. So no need for any DA investment. All right, moving on. Next, we've got the Ilya. So Ilya, I don't think I need to talk through Ilya. However, I do think I need to talk through Nanaka because Nanaka is actually 
um, she's used quite a fair bit in CB, let's put it that way. And so Nanaka is in the line of the two stars that will be released, she will be coming on Ilya's banner. And so if I hop over to her profile, you'll see this is Nanaka over here, let me introduce you. Looking real freaking good, but you know what looks better? Her skills, oh yeah. Alright, and so inflicts massive magic damage to the enemy with the highest current HP based on percentage. And so in the context of CB, you can already see where this is going, right? Massive magic damage to the enemy, one single enemy. And so you can kind of expect this to be on par with like Kyoka or like Skiaru. And then the interesting part about the skill is the enemy with the highest current HP, which may or may not be entirely useful. There are certainly some tricky things that you can do with this. Like uh, some of the things that do come to mind are like Halloween Shinobu targeting the lowest current HP. And then so for Halloween Shinobu, you pair her up with like Tamaki or Arisa or Hatsune. All three of these characters have like a homing skill, like uh, target the highest magical attack or physical attack. And so they're going to chunk like some poor DPS and then your Halloween Shinobu goes in and chunks them as well. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is because like you could use some kind of logic here for Nanaka, just as long as you big brain it right. But like, just remember highest current HP it's more than likely going to be a tank. And so whilst I'm not completely ruling her out for arena, I reckon she definitely has arena utility. You just gotta, you just gotta think a little bit for this one here. And so next let's have a look at skill one, which is Stardust Magic reduces magic defense of the enemies within a radius of the target by a small amount. So to be very, very clear, what happens is she's going to look at the nearest enemy. And so that's probably like the enemy Miyako or Lima or Nozomi or whoever. And then 200 range around that, she is going to be able to target with the magic defense down. And so it says a small amount, but like a 48% multiplier is pretty good. Again, considering like this big boy over here, massive magic damage with some defense down, I don't see why you wouldn't use her. All right, and so moving on, let's have a look at skill two. So this is probably more PvP oriented. Moderate magic damage again to highest HP, current HP unit. And then on top of that, they're gonna get stunned for 1.5 seconds. So just, just remember guys, all of these homing skills, they can be caught by taunts. It's your Nozomis and it is your Cookers that are gonna be catching these guys. But otherwise, Nanaka, new two star unit, she is really, really freaking solid. I actually for the life of me cannot remember if you can get her through like dungeon or stuff like that. And so we might end up having to DA for her. Anyway, let's go back to the skills and I'm pretty sure there's not much left to cover off. The bonds looking super nice, but that loot pattern's looking kind of sucky. Like it's already so low, 48 defense down. And then it's like four, it's an interval of four. It's not bad, it's not bad at all. But then the exciting one, the stun is only occurring like once every five or four actions. Eh, maybe, maybe not. Me personally, I'm not willing to fork out the DAs to like juice up my Nanaka. So unfortunately, it's pretty unlikely that I will be using her for arena. Translation, I'm probably not big enough brain to use her. All right, and so with that being said, who is next? We've got Christmas Chica. Okay, and so guys, welcome to Christmas Chica. Christmas Chica is gonna be our first Christmas unit out of like two or three, I believe. And so let's have a quick look at her skills. And to summarize it, to be honest, she is pretty much the same as her base. And what I mean by that is that she fills more of a supportive role. However, Christmas Chica, I know a lot of you have heard about it, but like, I think she is a nightmare to use. And I'm only saying this from like a competitive CB point of view. If I remember correctly, for Christmas Chica, you need to leave her base copy at like some certain bond level, like bond level four or something. You have to leave her at three stars. You have to leave her at 11.4 with varying refining stars on each one of the equips. You need to leave her EX skill at like level one. You need to get her to like level 72, I think if I remember correctly. And all of this is hinging on her UB. So as you can see, she gets to summon three fairies. And so typically when you see fairies or when you see ads like Shinobu's dad and stuff, what's gonna come out of it is that generally we're probably going to be feeding TP to the bosses so that they can UB so that we can get hit and so we can UB more back to him. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen when we get to the ex chicka timelines. However, being a freaking level 72 unit with like no EX skill, no defensive capabilities, I, I think she's going to die a lot. And so I just want to say like, especially if you're not in like the competitive CB realm, I just, I don't, I don't think she's worth it. Oh, I don't think she's worth like putting that level of 
uh, control over. Yeah, really, like, I really would not bother with all of that junk. And so with that being said, let's run through what each one does. So it summons a purple fairy that deals magic damage on attack. So that's very, very straightforward, just hits them. Next, we've got the green fairy that recovers HP to the ally with the lowest HP, which is really, really nice. And then a blue fairy that grants TP recovery to all allies. So I'm pretty sure this is a static. Yep, it's a static amount of 50. But yeah, that's a pretty loaded UB. It's not like it's, well, like insanely crazy or anything. To sum it up, it does a little bit of damage. It recovers some HP to one unit and you get a TP boost on everyone. Very similar to Mahos. All right, and so let's move on. We've got rank two, a large physical attack buff to the ally with the highest physical attack. Pretty good, pretty nice. Sounds good. It's probably going to be like your Kari or your Christina or something like that. And then moving on to skill two, you've got a medium physical defense buff to all allies as well as a small recovery to the TP. This TP recovery goes to all allies within the range of the user wow that's a that's not really a big range at all and so that's pretty nice like a small amount of tp gain tp is always good all right and so i covered off christmas chica at the very start in terms of like cb in terms of arena arena i don't think she'll see much use but yeah should you roll for her let me put it this way if you are going to be rolling on Christmas Chica, you know that you're going to be rolling on Christmas Chica. I know some clans have like a designated like 15 people or 20 people that must roll for Christmas Chica. But otherwise, like to be honest, I I really would not bother with this one. You, you want that, right? You want it. All right, that's enough Christmas Chica. Let's move on to Christmas Ayane. So Christmas Ayane is probably like the most skippable character in the next few months. Let me hop over to skills and let's see. And so really in a nutshell, she just... <laughs> it does a lot of damage. Let, let's put it that way, guys. On her Union Burst, she does massive physical damage to the frontmost enemy, but she also gets recoil, which means she kind of hits herself, right? Kind of like that Pokemon move where if you run out of all of your moves, like the 0 out of 15 or whatever. I can't remember what the move is called, but it's like Flail or something. And then like they go like, like that. And then your Pokemon hits their Pokemon, but then your Pokemon takes damage because of recoil. Pretty much like that, right? So I guess we can say that Christmas Ayane is a Pokemon. And so coming back to the skills... <laughs> Let's have a look at skill one, which is just a straightforward large physical attack buff. And then skill two, which is medium physical damage with a minor knockback. Like I look at this kit and I can see why she is just unimportant, especially considering like we have a lot of other high priority units around this time. And so you might see some use from her in terms of like CB, considering she, it does sound like she is going to do a quite a fair bit of damage. But you already know, like there's almost a lack of utility. She's probably not going to see any arena play at all. I don't know about you guys but i think we have enough physical damage dealers right now and so i really would hold on my gems and i'm sorry ayanet this christmas is not for you all right let's have a look at the next one and we have arrived at new year's yui new year's yui everybody knows her everyone knows she is the cheat code one of the ultimate supports and so i'm gonna just shut up about that and let's go have a look at her skills what exactly makes her so broken again if i was to describe this character it's essentially giving up all offense to become like the ultimate defense so let's start off with the UB deploys a damage barrier. So oh, wait, this tooltip is so cool. So nullify incoming physical and magical damage for a certain amount. Uh, let me think about who has this. It's kind of like Jun's or Cooker's shield, but I believe this does not actually do any absorption. And so as damage is coming in, she's just going to take zero damage. Actually, you know what? Yukari. It's just like Yukari's shield. Except in this case, it works for both physical and magic damage. All right, so everybody gets a damage barrier. Everybody gets a HP regenerate, which I am a massive fan of. And so as you can see over there, HP over time or AKA heal over time, what we refer to as hot. HOT, hot, usually generally speaking in most games, Hots are going to heal more in the long run compared to like your straight heals. And so you can certainly expect this to be like a buffed up version compared to the heals right now. All right. And so lastly, we have the enmity part of it where she is screwing herself up by decreasing her magic attack by 90% for 18 seconds. This pretty much means that you can't rely on her auto attacks, but you don't bring New Year's Yui or New York Yui to do magic damage anyway, right? All right, and so I would say that's a pretty strong start. And so hopefully you can see why your team is going to survive almost 100% with New Year's Yui. However, her divine protection does not stop there. Let's go over to rank two, AKA your skill one. Inflicts physical attack and magic attack debuffs to the second closest enemy from the front. So you're essentially cucking someone like really, really hard, right? It's kind of like Maho or Yuki with the blind, except I believe this is 100% rate. And so if 
unit is blinded by like Yuki or Maho, they still have a 30% hit rate. What that means is that you're leaving it up to luck. 30% rate, like I don't know, I've hit more scrolls in Maple Story at 30% rates than like I should. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that this skill, Weakness Petal, it's essentially guaranteeing that you'll take less damage. That's even more damage mitigation, it's just mitigating the enemy's damage rather than mitigating the incoming da- wait. That's kind of the same thing. Moving on, let's have a look at the skill to apply a magic attack buff to all allies who deal magic damage. This one's really nice because it's not actually dependent on area or range. It's literally like, well, if you do magic damage, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a buff. And so I think this is a really, really great conditional. But yeah, all of those skills combined, let's have a look at the EX magic attack. This one, uh, this one's interesting. This one's very, very interesting because you might be asking, if she's gonna cripple herself anyway with her UB, why exactly does she need magic attack? What I need you guys to remember is that typically speaking, your recovery skills, like your heals, they are based on magic attack down here. And so look at this guys, and this is a good thing, right? If I come over here, New Year's Yui, a magic attack again. It's a good thing, guys. She is getting bigger heals for everybody. Like, look at that. You got skill two into skill one, into an auto, into skill two, into auto, into skill one. And then down here for the loot pattern, you've got a very similar pattern. All they've done is they've added an extra auto here, but you can see that the uptime on each of the skills is actually quite high. And so really it's all of this, all of the skills, all the UBs and all all the patterns and stuff, all of this contributes to her being like a super busted cheat code for survivability. However, you may ask yourself, well, when exactly do we need something like that crazy, right? Like pretty much invincibility. Just remember guys, Luna Tower, I don't know if that was a pain in the ass for you guys, but it sure was a pain in the ass for me. Questing, you got your dungeons. We're going to be getting new dungeons. Don't forget there is still content coming. We've got the very hard bosses, which most people are probably able to one hit by now, but also there will be higher difficulty modes that are introduced. Just like how we used to only have hard bosses, we now have very hard. And then it's just going to get crazier from there. So New Year's Yui, she is most certainly going to see play. Sometimes we might see her in arena like she is pretty annoying as you could see. I personally can't vouch for seeing any New Year's Yui in CB. I haven't run it across any comps that feature her. But trust me guys, there are definitely going to be times where it's like, okay guys, take out your New Year's Yui. Very similar to how we're like, okay, Take out your Makotos, guys. We need the defense shred. And so New Year's Yui 100% is going to be a role priority. All right, we are we are almost there. We're up to New Year's Hiyori, which is an interesting one. And so guys, welcome to New Year's Hiyori. She is actually quite a strong attacker. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that she is probably going to be pretty useless in arena. I believe she doesn't really have too much utility. So let's run through her skills really quickly. Physical defense down as well as TP gain rate. So that's quite similar to the buff that uh, Christina gave. Gets. And on top of that, does pretty big damage. So that's that's quite good. It's dependent on skill level and physical attack, pretty standard. And so with that, let's move on to the skill one. So physical attack buff to all allies who use physical attacks. And then she also gets one as well. She gets a stronger version. Very straightforward. Literally nothing I can say about that. Let's move on to skill two, which is even more straightforward. She she just does damage. And so New Year's Hiyori is kind of like your Christmas Ayane, or it kind of is like your Arisa. Kind of like your Tomo probably is a better example. But in a nutshell, and I don't even know if I have to talk through these, like physical attack, we've got crit buffs, and then we got like her loop, which is just damage, right? It's just damage, damage, damage. You can see why I kind of discounted her from Arena, of course, she could be part of your Stormbreaker team considering she does so much damage. But otherwise, we truly have a lot of physical DPSs. I don't think she brings like too much new to the table. The defense down is kind of pitiful. It's at a 20% rate or 0.2 multiplier. So at level 100 or 120 or whatever, she's going to have what, like 22 physical defense down, which kind of sucks. Like it's good and it's clearly better than like Christmas Ioness considering she doesn't have like the recoil. She's also doing like the physical defense fence down and she's got TP gain rate like it, she's a great attacker but if you also have a whole bunch of physical attackers then you could definitely skip this one obviously for like you top 10 or top 25 or whatever clan battle clans it's pretty likely that your clan leaders are going to ask you to roll for new year's hiori but just looking at the competitive landscape and like the jewel counts of everybody because like i don't know if you guys have seen like the christina extreme pools but there are a lot of broke people in top 10 to top 25 you know what i'm saying and so yeah you will know if you are pulling on New Year's Hiyori. All right, and so 
with that, let's go on to Valentine Shizuru, who is the last unit we will talk about today. And so as you can see, she is a baker. But enough of that noise, let's go into the skills and see what she does exactly. In a nutshell, she is a very, very strong offensive support for physical attackers. Her union burst is called Sweet Sanctuary. She creates a field around the user. And this field gives you physical attack, physical crit rate, and TP regeneration to the allies within. Not only that, but the radius of this field is at 400 range, which is considerable. On top of that, if I'm not wrong, she is actually a midline unit. So she's like standing right in the middle of the team, buffing everybody. And so yeah, only good things from there. Like it does not take a genius to realize physical attack, physical crit rate, and TP regenerate. That's all good things. All right, so moving on to skill one, we've got Cureness Sign. A small heal as well as a small TP recovery to to the ally with the lowest HP. However, if she has recently activated Sweet Sanctuary and it's still active while she is using this skill, then that heal and TP recovery applies to everybody. And actually building on this point, moving to skill two, we've got another conditional based on the field's activity as well. So for this one, inflicts medium physical damage, that's cool, but she also inflicts a small physical defense debuff to the target. And so again, when the conditional is activated, she is going to get a more potent physical defense down. And so really all I mean by that is that it's going from 0.15 multiplier to 0.25 multiplier which does not sound like a lot but it is pretty significant and the reason it's so significant is like look at this skill 2 and then 3 actions and then skill 2 and then 3 actions and then skill 2 again the uptime on this bad boy is actually quite good and so you can see why like she is so sought after right like the ultimate well at this point in the game the ultimate physical support and so hopefully all of that is going to help you realize that you <laughs> you need Valentine Shizuru. However, that is from the perspective of a clan battle player. And the reason that I make that distinction is because it's it's about this time where you do need to start picking between clan battle versus arena. The majority of you are probably gonna pick clan battle in which like Valentine Shizuru is definitely the valid pick here. But I don't know about you, but my resources are running low. Like I've got a whole bunch of units that I am very behind on in terms of gear. And this list is just gonna keep growing. There is just a lot of upkeep that's required. But Anyway, that pretty much wraps up the evaluation and like a first look at all of these different characters up until Muimi. And so in terms of role priority, I would say it's New Year's Yui and then Valentine Shizuru. And then depending on how tryhard you are, it could be New Year's Hiyori or Christmas Chica over here. So that's one, two, and then potentially three three, four, and then I would look at the Christmas INF, five, Ruka, six, Ilya, seven. Although some people will say you probably should roll on the Ilya banner to get the Nanaka. I would say if you really are trying for the Nanaka, probably wait until Chika. I'm starting to lose my voice again, but that's, uh, that's how it is with these evaluation videos. Quite a lot to take in. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And I know I haven't been around. I'm... <laughs> Honestly, I'm figuring a lot of stuff out. I'm just going through a lot of personal struggles right now. And so I hope you guys understand that. It's not because I'm bored of Precon. It's not because I hate Precon. I'm just, I'm just struggling a little bit. But otherwise, there's not really much left for me to say, except, well, I want to ask you guys, does that priority kind of sound right to you? Did the evaluation sound right? Or did I miss something and, and it's going to make me look like a freaking clown? Whatever your thoughts are, drop them down in the comments below. And honestly, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys guys so much but otherwise as always please consider a like a sub a comment and if you would like to support the channel we do have a couple of links in the description below come join the discord if you want it's okay if you don't and well as valentine shizuru once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye